Do you hear me? Okay. Okay, thank you. So, um, good evening, everybody. Um, Thank you for uh, all the organizers. Thank you for Mr. Hamouda. Thank you for Pharmacerys, all the team. And also thank you for Dr. Nu for giving me this opportunity to be with you uh, today in this webinar. So um, um, today we're talking about PRP and hair disorders, advantages and limits. Um, I am an assistant professor. I am um, I'm working uh, at the dermatology department uh, of Sfax. This is my hometown, Sfax. So today we're going to talk about PRP, which is a platelet-rich plasma, um, which is a therapeutic procedure uh, that consists in autologous preparation of platelets manufactured from uh, a patient's own venous blood. So the technique is simple. We will withdraw uh, blood and place in tube and then centrifuge uh, the blood and we will, we will obtain a, a plasma with a much higher number in platelets. Um, that we, we will have a, a, such a concentration of growth factors and cytokines which will be released by platelet granules. These different growth factors and Cytokines um, can accelerate tissue repair in different parts uh, of the body, such as the liver, uh, the bones, the tendons, the cartilage, and of course, uh, the skin. And in dermatology, PRP is recently introduced. The first experience was in 2006 uh, with Ubel Aol, um, and the indication was a pretreatment of follicular units before uh, hair grafts, and the results were excellent. Uh, and um, another, many other indications also uh, have been reported, um, such as skin rejuvenating, um, also hyperpigmentation, uh, without that all being validated, uh, wound healing also, and then hair restoration, uh, which is our topic today. So here, um, growth factors and cytokines released by platelets will stimulate the bulge um, themselves and activate the proliferative phase of the hair follicle, the hair cycle. Sorry. And you can see here in this in the in the graph uh, the different um, uh, growth factors acting on different targets um, in, uh, of the the follicular uh, the follicle unit. So concerning alopecia, now you know there are many types of alopecia. Uh, in non-scarring alopecia, the most important and the most common hair disorder is, of course, endogenetic alopecia. Uh, then we have also alopecia areata, which is quite frequent, and um, we will see finally some scarring um, alopecia. So I, I'm not an expert in hair disorders, but um, I will share with you some um, some slides, some uh, some informations I learned uh, from uh, the AAD annual meeting concerning PRP and hair. So I was there uh, last year and um, here uh, there are uh, some slides I taken from there. Here, for example, the author, the, the speaker um, talked about robust scientific evidence for efficacy in AGA, in, in androgenetic alopecia. Um, however, in lichen canis pilaris and frontal fibrosing alopecia, there are many inquiries and questions. Here, another speaker wondered if we have proof or not, um, and then and insisted on combination therapies that may be best than PRP alone. Here, more than 80% of, of satisfactions among uh, patients treated with uh, PRP. So that was amazing. I've been in, uh, in Madrid for um, the AADV Congress, and that was another story. So uh, uh, I've attended the, topic, the, um, the lecture uh, given by Professor uh, Grimald from Barcelona. And uh, so what's new in 2019? We find PRP, it's a new procedure. And then he exposed um, his study uh, about 25 uh, men with endogenetic uh, alopecia. And he tried to compare uh, PRP to placebo, which was a saline uh, solution. 
And um, in the group A, so the group A received PRP on the right half head and placebo on the left half head. And the group B received PRP on the left half head and placebo on the right half head. And the results were some differences, but not spectacular, and some of the injection itself. And uh, finally, for, uh, in the updates on management of alopecia, we report that PRP therapy may be a potential uh, option, therapeutic option for hair restoration in patients with androgenetic alopecia. And uh, so um, uh, the limited indication here is androgenetic alopecia. And that was quite disappointing for me. And I was wondering, is PRP really efficient in treating alopecia and hair disorders? So let's take a look at, uh, at the literature. Here I just want uh, to, to draw your attention to the fact that we have increasing uh, number of publications uh, concerning uh, uh, hair, uh, PRP and hair. Um, during the last five years, you have 184 results in publications. And you, uh, for the last uh, year, you, we have 67 publications. So we're more and more learning about hair uh, and PRP. And um, this is promising, I think. So well, this is the plan of my uh, presentation. The biggest part, we'll talk about uh, PRP in androgenetic alopecia. And then we will focus on alopecia areata and uh, some cases about uh, scaring alopecia. So the first part is uh, PRP in androgenetic uh, First of all, um, we will talk about, about the protocol. Uh, you know, there is no standard protocol for preparing uh, PRP. Here, um, it was um, a, Spanish, um, a Spanish study in 2017, uh, including 78 patients. PRP was prepared using a single spin method and uh, administered at three monthly sessions followed by three bi-monthly sessions. And the results were um, obviously excellent. More than 70% of male and female AGA patients uh, reached a successful outcome. It could be um, um, uh, an excellent protocol, but then we, you can see we have other proposed protocols. So there are some investigators who, uh, who, are, who are not convinced by these protocols, perhaps. And you, you see here um, in this paper, in this American paper, uh, the authors um, discuss the generic methods, so we agree. We, we have to collect venous blood with an anticoagulant, usually citrate, to uh, prevent uh, blood clotting. And then we will do the centrifugation of whole blood to separate red blood and then to, to concentrate platelets. And uh, all over the literature, you can see different methods uh, for preparing PRP. Uh, you know, there are many commercial kits and also manual methods, single spin method, uh, double spin method, um, and also for the use of the activator, which is optional. Um, you may use calcium chloride, you may use calcium gluconate, in, and this is uh, optional. The platelet enrichment varies greatly from one study to another, uh, three to six times uh, the, the, the number of platelets in whole blood. And the most of, um, mainly, the most of, um, of studies had uh, positive results in terms of hair regrowth uh, and hair density principally. So you see there's no standard for PRP preparation and, and administration. And here in this paper, authors have proposed a treatment protocol. They suggested a single spin centrifugation that can produce um, a, a plasma with a platelet arrangement three to six times the mean concentration in whole blood. And for the activator, they proposed calcium chloride or calcium gluconate um, that may uh, release more and more growth factors from platelet granules. And the authors also um, insisted uh, on the fact that um, in treating ADA, we should not administer PRP alone, but uh, it will be a coadjuvant in treating ADA. And we have to, to, to continue um, topical and oral treatment, uh, such as minoxidil, spinolactin, or finasteride, or other treatments. Concerning the administration, uh, you know, injections may be 
intradermal or subcutaneous, but here uh, the subcutaneous bol bolus um, it was proposed um, since it, uh, it allows better PRP diffusion and less injections. Of course, injections have to be di distributed in areas of thinning area. The volume is valuable, 2 to 12 milliliter per session. This is also variable uh, through studies. And the frequency here, they suggest uh, one session per month for the three months, and then every three months for the first year. But also three monthly sessions, um, then, then every six months um, has shown effectiveness. And here they gave uh, this example of a 31-year-old man with, endo with endogenetic alopecia before and four months after a five PRP treatment session. The outcome was excellent, as you can see. Now, is PRP efficient in male AGA? This is a Turkish paper. Uh, it was a randomized cross-sectional study uh, comparing PRP uh, to placebo. So uh, 25, 25 men with AGA uh, divided into two groups. Group one receiving monthly PRP treatment, three injections, and then after a washout period of three months, um, he will be receive uh, the placebo, the saline solution, and the other receive uh, firstly the saline solutions and then the PRP. The assessment was based on density. Uh, using the troposcopic digital image. As a result, um, there were, and at the end of the study, um, there was increase in the mean total hair count for both groups. Another fact is that the rate of increase from baseline at M9 was greater in group two. But here, perhaps there is a bias uh, since there was a greater proportion of patients with low grade AGA compared to uh, group one no side effects reported. So yes, PRP has shown positive results here in treating male AGA. However, more studies are needed to assess factors affecting the outcomes, especially the stage of uh, AGA. Now, what about female patients? Um, this is an American uh, paper. Um, it was a randomized cross-controlled pilot study, including 20 women with AGA. Um, they were divided into two arms, arm A receiving PRP um, monthly sessions for three months, and then minoxidil, and arm B receiving minoxidil and then PRP. The first treatment during 12 weeks with a washout period of eight weeks, and then uh, they had the second treatment with one year follow-up. The assessment was based on the TICO scan analysis and also a quality of life questionnaire at baseline and week 12. As you can see here in the graph, um, according to TICO scan analysis, with minoxidil, we have an increase in hair density, hair count, terminal hair density, and cumulative thickness, and the increase was significant. Uh, whereas in terms of quality of life, PRP was superior to minoxidil at 12. So the conclusion was that PRP is effective in women with the AGA, but not as effective as minoxidil. However, improvement in quality of life after PRP, but not after um, minoxidil, uh, suppose uh, uh, more satisfaction with PRP. Now, regarding grades of AGA, um, is PRP efficient at any stage uh, of the endogenetic alopecia? This is a very interesting uh, topic, I think. Here, the study included uh, 51 men uh, with Norwood Hamilton 2 to 5 grade and 42 women uh, of Ludwig 1 to 3 um, AGA. They had PRP six monthly sessions and uh, the results were significant improvement in hair density, hair thickness, uh, and pull test at uh, all stages for both groups at M6, but the lower level of alopecia, uh, grade two and three in male AGA and grade one in female AGA had better response to PRP. And the conclusion here was that PRP can be recommended as an effective treatment for grades two and three in male AGA and grade one in female AGA. Concerning side effects, 
The most important side effect uh, for PRP is pain open injection. Sometimes you can have erythema, edema, headache, cephalic hypersensitivity, but no severe AEs have been reported. So we could consider that PRP is a relatively safe procedure. And there are some contraindications, of course, um, such as um, critical thrombocytopenia, uh, the use of NSAIDs, the use of systemic uh, corticosteroids within two weeks, etc. Now let's move, uh, move on and talk about PRP in alopecia areata. We will firstly compare PRP versus intralesional corticosteroids, and, um, which is triamcinolone sotonide, and then PRP versus minoxidil 5%, and finally PRP in uh, the case of alopecia areata totalis. The first publication comparing PRP versus intralesional corticosteroids uh, in, um, published in the BGD, and um, it, uh, it was a randomized double-blind study, so um, comparing PRP versus intralesional corticosteroids, triamcinolone, and placebo, including 45 patients, uh, each receiving one treatment in one patch for three monthly sessions, and for those with leading of temporoparietal uh, or frontooccipital parts, they were having either PRP or triamcinolone um, on one part and placebo on the other part. And the assessment was based on hair regrowth, hair dystrophy, and the KI67 index. So as a result, uh, PRP significantly increases regrowth, hair regrowth, and decreases hair dystrophy compared to both uh, intralesional uh, corticosteroid and placebo with a higher KI67 um, level. No A is reported. And here you have the clinical photos um, with uh, this excellent outcome after treatment uh, with PRP in the occipital uh, region of the skull. So PRP may serve as a safe and effective treatment option in alopecia. Second publication, uh, it is an Egyptian publication, uh, including uh, 80 patients, uh, men and women. Group 1 received intralesional triamcinolone, group 2 received uh, PRP, and the assessment was dermoscopic, and also uh, using the hair growth score with a six-month follow-up. So authors found that more hairy growth after uh, treatment in both groups. Um, there was significant regrowth of pigmented hair and decrease of hair dystrophy with dermoscopic assessment for both groups with no significant difference between the both groups. But um, concerning the follow-up, two patients from group two um, who had PRP had a relapse compared to 10 from group one. So uh, less relapse with uh, PRP than uh, with um, triamcinolone, in traditional triamcinolone. So PRP is a promising therapeutic alternative and another uh, positive result with PRP. The third um, study that compared PRP versus intralesional corticosteroids um, is an Indian publication, recent, published in 2020, April. Um, here, uh, the study included 40 patients, two group of 20. Um, so they have received PRP or intralesional corticosteroids every three weeks till 12 weeks. And the assessment was done um, by the SALT score. Uh, it's, it is a score of severity of the alopecia areata and um, photographs. So the, the, the results, we have reduction in salt score at each visit uh, was greater in the intralesional corticosteroids group. And the pain during intralesional injection was higher in the PRP group. And here, this is rather a negative results. Both intralesional corticosteroids and PRP were found to be efficacy efficacious, um, but the latter produced less improvement. So authors were, were, were not uh, really satisfied uh, here. What about minoxidil? If we want to compare PRP uh, and minoxidil 5% in treating uh, alopecia, and we have here a ticoscopic uh, evaluation. So the study included 19 patients, three groups of 30, divided into um, so three groups, receiving either PRP or minoxidil or placebo. Uh, and the assessment was clinic and trichoscopic at baseline M1, M2, and M3. Here, um, 
the, the thing which is important here is those treated with PRP had early response compared to patients treated with minoxidil and placebo. So here, uh, authors concluded that PRP is more efficient than minoxidil 5% in alopecia. Concerning the case of alopecia areata totalis, this is a pilot study, including 10 patients having alopecia totalis for at least three years, not having received any treatment for three months previously. And they have um, um, the scalp surgically divided into two parts and received four milliliters of PRP injected intradermally on the left or right side of the scalp at each point, uh, 0.1 milliliter of PRP with a monthly follow-up for four months. The results, eight patients has no regrowth, two patients less than 10% of hair regrowth, and globally there's no significant effect on hair regrowth as you can uh, see in the graph. So PRP is not effective in treating alopecia areata totalis. Now let's move on to talk about uh, the last uh, part of my talk, PRP and scarring alopecia, cicatricial alopecia. Um, there are only some case, uh, case reports in the literature and um, we'll begin by this first case of central centrifugal cicatricial alopecia. It was an Afro-American woman, 53 years old, uh, the diagnosis was histologically confirmed. She had received spironolactone, intralegional chiamcinolone, minoxidil, all were inefficient. And then she received PRP uh, at three monthly sessions. And you could see the result, uh, quite good uh, outcome. Second case with the lichen planus pilaris, woman, 70 years old, the diagnosis histologically confirmed. She had also received intralegional chiamcinolone, hydroxychloroquine, inefficient, and then uh, three monthly sessions of PRP. And you can see the results. Um, there is a, um, a good outcome, uh, although the photos were not taken from the same angle, I think. Third case, the frontal fibrosing alopecia with this woman uh, of 44 years, and the diagnosis histologically confirmed also. She had received many therapies, inefficient, and then she had received five monthly sessions of uh, PRP. And here you have the clinic and trichoscopic um, photos, um, uh, and you can see uh, the excellent outcome here also, one month after PRP sessions. So there are Still many, many uh, other reviews uh, of the literature concerning PRP and hair disorders. Um, I have chosen this, this one, the latest one, PRP and its use for cicatricial and non-cicatricial alopecias, narrative review published in June 2020 by Professor Grimald again. Just, just um, uh, rapidly, for androgenetic alopecia, uh, here the authors agree that a positive effect was demonstrated after injections of PRP after three sessions. So three sessions are needed to, uh, to have results um, showing an increase of hair density. Um, uh, then we might consider PRP to be safe and effective when concurrently uh, used with the patient's current medication. So he, here we emphasize on the fact that we, we have to encourage patients to continue um, their current medication, either topical or oral medications for AGA. Now regarding alopecia areata, the literature is poor and um, they also uh, remembered the fact that there is a possibility of self-regression of alopecia areata and then uh, globally the results are not so consistent. Uh, another important fact, um, they, they reported this case report about uh, ophiasic type uh, alopecia areata which had um, the patient was a woman and she had ophiasic type AA, resistant to aminoxidil, dermocorticoid, dermocorticosteroids, and three injections of intralegional chiamcinolone. And after two years, uh, she had PRP and she had uh, hair regrowth at month one with robust regrowth. Um, at, but this is um, to be confirmed. Of course, it is only a case report. Concerning scaling alopecia, we are, there are only anecdotal cases reported. It might work in some kinds of scaring alopecia, LPP, frontal fibrosing alopecia, 
Um, but there are only uh, case reports uh, through the literature. And the reason why PRP might be useful here is still unknown. Maybe because these various growth factors would help diminish the inflammation and protect and stimulate uh, the new follicle. So to sum, up, to sum up, if you ask me PRP and alopecia, I would say the blur persists and um, we still need um, large scale studies. Um, in AGA, it is quite promising, certainly, uh, but we should insist on combined therapies, never administer PRP alone to treat AGA. The technique is simple. It is usually cost effective. The side effects are mild, although the preparation, the dose and the number and the rhythm of sessions are very valuable. There is no standard here. So we need large scale randomized controlled studies versus placebo with long term follow up uh, to determine the frequency of injections and um, the, the optimal consideration of PRP. Regarding alopecia areata, there is no significant difference uh, versus intralesional triamcinolone. And for alopecia areata totalis, there is zero effect. So uh, it is not uh, indicated here. And concerning scarring alopecia, yes, perhaps we might, um, we might uh, do it for some patients having a CCCA or lichen planus pilaris or frontal uh, fibrosing alopecia. That was all. Um, I hope uh, you find it uh, interesting. Uh, thank you for listening. Thank you for your attention. Uh, we have to thank you, our dear, our dear guest, dear guest from, Tunisia, from Tunisia, Dr. Khadija. Dr. Khadija. It was, it was a really, a very fantastic, a very fantastic talk about PRP. Thank you. thank you so much, thank you so much, my dear, for, dear, for such a presentation. And I hope, and I hope you will be with us very soon, inshallah, in our mega conference, Luxor Derma. Thank you so much, Dr. Nuh. Thank you for all the organizers. I was so pleased to be with you today. Um, it was really nice experience. Um, yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, my dear. And now, after the very interesting talk of Dr. Khadija, we will have our maestro, Mamar Maestro. Prof. General Dr. Magid Sheikh, mm -hmm. and he will talk us about lasers, and he, we will we will have interesting time with his laser movie cartoon. It will yes. be a time and of fun and uh, <laughs> yes, and, yes. and uh, art. Uh, yes, th yes, fun and art, and he has the ability to make uh, harsh scientific data into a very simple way of art. So I should thank you about the thank idea and really you enrich it our field by such movies. Thank yeah. you very much. Okay. Wait. After the two, two minutes. minutes.